good, man. I got 20 minutes of max recording. Are you freaking kidding me? No, no, no. Wait. I gotta fix this. Screw it. I, I, I can fit it on 20 minutes. Okay. I'll just use my other phone. I'm outside right now. You see how wide I am? That's exactly what I'm talking about. In my, you know, in my newborn photos, in my one-year-old photos, you see how wide I am? That's exactly what it's like right now. Matter of fact, it's about here right now. So like, I'll walk over there. And uh, what I told you I was gonna do, I am gonna do. So, I hope I have enough time. I don't know if I do. But if I don't, either I'm gonna just go ahead and find some more storage or just this is my phone I got on me right now. I have two phones on me right now. Actually, I got three phones on me right now. Because, I mean, they don't call it headphones for nothing. So, yeah. That's how audio gets through your ears. Especially when you use a telephone. That's where you call it like this. Anyway, it's not that cold. And on top of that, it was snowing, but it's very gentle snow. It's actually, it was so white out here, man. But anyway, I've seen a lot of people make up a lot of wisdom tooth recovery videos, like along the way. Me, I guess I waited more than two weeks to share with you what was going on. So, in everybody else's case, it was like, you know, they were just maybe sharing a few tips how to get a good recovery. I might as well, if you're in case you might be getting your third molars out. So yeah, I'll be dropping everything, but I, I'm gonna head there first because I need a place to sit. I'm not good walking and talking at the same time. So yeah, I'll see you there. All right, I'm on the place right now. The roads ain't messed up like usual. This is Edmonton, and it's like March, and it's the first day of spring, and this is what March looks like. Can you imagine what the last day of winter looked like if you're here in Edmonton or you're here in Canada? You know the last day of winter? It was all clear. No snow. Look like summer conditions, right? All clear, all good. This is the first day of spring. Anyway, enough of that. Now it's time to show you all the full details. Again, might not have time, but I'll give you everything I got. So, I was always familiar with, uh, you know, wisdom teeth in uh, general. The fact is, I was just hoping I would just be that part of the rare amount of people who would just, you know, not happen to grow, not even a single molar. Not the case for me. And the moment I found out, the moment I found out was in around in uh, November. And uh, in November, I was starting to feel like such a, it's not like a throbbing pain. Not like the type of pain you would feel after your wisdom tooth is out. That's not the type of pain I felt. Matter of fact, it was more like sharp and like intense pain. Only when I would like bite down. And that's on my bottom left. That's the issue I found out with. And uh... Take my damn headphones off because they're not helping. Yeah, that's it. I can't even hear myself talk. So yeah, that was... Should I I'll just put it where it's safe? Alright, basically what happened. Yeah, I found out. I found out. And then I had a dentist appointment that month. Where I I went I went for a teeth cleaning prior and then my next appointment I had to go do uh what was it? The one I had to take x-rays? No, the one where I had to get fillings. Because after you get your 
cleaning done, you know. They take out the cavities and everything, and then they have to fill it in. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just, it's a, I don't know. Bring a mark, so they have to fill it in. I don't know why. It's called the cavity filling. If you've never had that. They also suggested that at the same time, we take out my wisdom teeth. Now, at the time, I just only had one erupted tooth. I had two others on this side. The one on top here, I'm free of that one. But I had three. And let me tell you something right now, friends. I was actually, whoa, I would do it. I would have done it. I thought maybe I was scared to do it. Or rather, it was because I thought we didn't have enough time. They had the time to do it. We didn't. It was just me and my dad there, right? We went there. And uh, I thought we had to go home. Because we, we actually had to do other things. We had other other hustling, you know? We were out to get the... To find this one address where we had to, uh, you know, fix the car. So I thought we had to do that right away. And yeah, uh, so we didn't get that done. So I said no, and then they're like, you're going to have to get it out eventually. I won't fast forward yet, but throughout the rest of 20, after the appointment, I continued feeling that one pain, man. I just continued feeling that it was actually getting annoying. Is this one actually stable here? <sighs> Please be stable. I'm gonna keep it here in case it falls. So yeah. Cause I also gotta keep my hands warm. So now that I refused, I continue feeling that pain. And it was actually annoying anytime I would just bite down eat food. Even if I tried eating on the opposite side. Anyway, even if that, even as I tried to eat on the other side, it didn't help. So I didn't do that. Should I just go home? I feel like it doesn't make sense being out here. I think I should just go home. You know, if I get too cold, I'll, I'll, I'll go home. But and I'll continue there. So it was getting annoying. Even if I'm in school. So I googled up everything. I googled it up. Why was it that I was... It was cutting... Like it was actually like cutting into like my gum. And it was erupting. But I was also unsure about it. So I googled it up. And then I got me some reassurance that yes it was wisdom tooth erupting. And that it usually occurs between the ages of 17 and 25. But I'm like... I am 16 bro. I'm too young for this. I'm 16. At least that's where most of it occurs. Sometimes it can occur earlier and or later. So, I guess that was mean and it, it sucked for me because I knew that people who grew wisdom teeth, it became extremely painful. And I also learned that if you don't get your wisdom teeth out, then maybe in the future it will cause problems. And that's exactly what my dentist told me. I can grow it out. But then experience problems in the future. Or I could get it out as soon as possible. And then go through the recovery process. Which it ain't the most pleasant. Because obviously it's a procedure. And you have to get through that. And then I would be safe and secure from all the future problems. And complications. Which is probably like. I don't know what it would be. Actually yeah I do. Because I was starting to experience one of those future problems. <sighs> Screw it. I'm going home, bro. I'm going home. You know what? <clears throat> I'm going to just press stop and then I'll record again. It's going to be two separate cuts we're going to put together. I'm not in any video of this. All right, I'll see you at home. What the hell? Stop the videos. I ain't got a better place to record it right here. So... Um. I don't want to record in my room, it's too messy. I don't want to record on stairs because but if you're a lot of noise, it seems like the perfect place, so we'll be fine, but it's too cold. I come back when it's too cold and then I just I can't talk. Alright, here we go.
So when we continue where we left off, uh, I think I was just talking about, uh, yeah. I eventually saw the complications of wisdom teeth if you keep them. Yeah, when you're older, then that's not going to be good. Also considering, because I had to get my wisdom teeth out. Because in a few years from now, say I'm like, 19 or 20, I'm going to be getting my, I think a double jaw surgery. Because look at me, I'm screwed up. I'm screwed up. You can look at me. I don't even need to explain what's going on. Because I'm screwed up. My face is screwed up. You'll see. Why? But I, I'll tell you it's one reason why it has to do with my wisdom teeth. Because... When the when the surgeon is going in for the for the cut, when they have to remove the excess bone, that is where my wisdom tooth is, right here, and that's gonna interfere with a lot. So in my case, I guess I would have like, especially like a bigger complication, because you know I have I have other things I gotta fix. It's not even just wisdom tooth. It's all my my. Maxifolary, whatever you, how you say that, that's the top, and then the mandibular, right here. And it's so far protruded that I'm gonna need a surgery for that. And it interferes with the way I bite, it interferes with the way I talk, it inter well, it doesn't cause me any more complications than just trying to like bite, call like bite down on like, like thin foods and like, you know, type, type stuff. But back to the wisdom teeth, because that's a topic, and I don't want to waste any more time. I want to drop all the details right here. So we're in December, and yeah, I just spent the rest of the month dealing with all this, you know, annoying pain. And just the, all this annoying, like, just trying to bite down on that. And then I would always go check in the mirror, and I could feel. Like, I could literally see... Like, I can literally see the, the tooth itself, literally getting stuck under the gum. And I actually have two others here, you know that, but they were not at all ever erupted. Only the, only this one. Now, I am left with just trying to, I don't know. Here's January. I was, me, myself, I was planning, I was just wondering, oh, I can get my wisdom teeth out here. I want to choose my own time. Because I felt like January was the right time to get it out. But by the, but by the time in January, oh no, we kind of ended up forgetting about it. And I never really thought about it much. I was thinking, no, I could just do it maybe in a couple of other months. Maybe that's, what would be the perfect time. I thought this pain was something I could deal with. And it was for January, because in January, I never really felt, I, I feel like I kind of got used to it, yeah. I'd bite down, like, it would still, like, cut into the gum, but it wouldn't really hurt. And somehow, sometimes, like, say like this, for example. Let's say, like, this thing right here. This is the gum, right? And these are, this is my top and bottom teeth. Like, they were always bite down into that, right? And now the gum would become, like, swollen. But in January, it wasn't like that. Sometimes when I would bite down, it would be, like, normal. See, look. They'd bite down without, like, actually catching on to the gum. So, yeah, that was what it was like for the rest of January. And, uh... <laughs> it was, like, an on and off thing. I don't know. This was, it's the most unusual stuff. I don't know why. I don't know. Other people's experiences versus mine, I don't know. So, now fast forward to February, which is probably like the most dangerous, like, maybe not the most dangerous. But yeah. I think it was just around later in February versus, and uh, along with earlier in March, which was earlier this month, yeah. The whole thing started again, man. 
and the tooth, uh, I started to notice it was becoming just, 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 just slightly more, it doesn't, it didn't fully erupt, normally it would take several more months, or years even, to like fully erupt, and I'm 16, so how do you expect me to have like full grown, a full grown third molar, that's, that would be actually mad bro, imagine, so yeah, so, I was thinking, like, nah, it's time bro, it's time, but, I also had to like, just, I don't know, I felt like I had to just not do it at the same time, because, first of all, I was watching, I was, I was, I was, I was searching out, the internet always just tries to get a hold of me whenever, in my life, it's always the internet ruining, and the internet ruining, bro, don't believe everything you see on the internet, because when I search up on the internet about all of this wisdom tooth stuff and what happens after wisdom tooth uh, uh, procedures, and then I hear about dry socket, I hear about all of this. I hear about all these different complications that that are that are not even. You can't even. It's not even. Anyway, we're gonna get to that later. But this is where I started to feel more pain again. And this time it was not fun. This time it did not subside because the pain subsided just for a bit. Came back in like early March. So like that was three weeks ago. Oh my gosh. Here comes the worst part. When I looked into my gum, in the, on my left bottom, it would end up be mad swollen. I thought it was just mad swelling, like on the gum. Like I saw like a whole like literal bump over my wisdom tooth, and like it was still just erupted. Like it was impacted. I, I found out that it was like the wisdom tooth was impacted because when your when your when your tooth is impacted. It can't go straight out. And so it kind of grows at like like an angle and then it gets stuck and it pushes against the other teeth. Like there's literally like no room for it to grow properly. So what ends up happening is you face complications from impacted wisdom teeth. And I have that problem. Now in my case Uh, if I'm not that, well, that wasn't just like any swelling, just because I kept biting down and hurt it. At that point, it was unbearable. I had a bowl of pasta, right? I had a bowl of pasta. The minute I, uh, the minute I even make my two jaws, like make my top and bottom chewing teeth make contact, even. I can't even make full contact because when I bite down, there's the gum again. <laughs> so like you would see if you would, on my other side, there's nothing. But if I bite down, there would still be, there would still be a gap between the top and bottom because the bump is interfering. And that bump happened to be a cyst. I don't know what a cyst is, but like, I guess it's some sort of, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Okay, I don't know much else. But there was like a, an abscess over my gum, like a gum abscess. Do you know how dangerous that is? Because at this point in time, it has already been three to four months since I had my 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 cavity filling appointment, where they told me that they had enough time to like. They suggested me we should get my wisdom teeth out. Oh, you're gonna have to get it out eventually. Yeah, they were right. Guess what? Because At this point, I was inflamed, I was swollen, it was in pain. And guess what? If I had left that, 
I was pretty much on like the verge of infection. And if that happens, the infection can spread to other parts of my body. It will spread to my whole anatomy. And if that happens, I'd be in life-threatening condition. I'd probably die. Immediately. That was on a Thursday. And I was just desperate just to get it out. Get it out right now. I'm done. I can't bear this pain no more. That's how bad it was bothering me. I couldn't eat anything. I couldn't even sleep. I couldn't even brush my teeth. I don't know. So then I had to bear with it for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That was the last day I went to school for the whole week. Tuesday come. Come Tuesday. Now, that is when we booked the appointment on Tuesday. Because I was just desperate to get out. But before we even had to get our wisdom teeth out to the, the to our local dentist, we actually had to go to another place before that. Before that. So we can run some x-rays uh, for our surgeon to see. So like they can get like the, you know, all the data, all the info they need, all the measurements, all the details and about, you know, how this thing is going to go. We went to a, I know, like an oral surgeon office and they took me, gave me some x-rays, asked me some questions. We met the surgeon, very nice people. I don't know. The dentist people are always nice. People who work anywhere in the medical field are so nice. I give credit to them. But yeah. So they ran measurements, they ran x rays. Bam. Now that we were done that, we go to our north side dental. And then. Just sitting in that chair, man. I knew. I knew. I knew what I was going to go down with. Because in the surgery, you're usually... You're usually... Unconscious, right? You are put in a state where you do not... See, feel... Anything. Not, not... You don't even feel that anesthetic going in... To... You know, wherever. I was awake. I saw everything. I heard everything. I didn't feel anything, but... I was conscious the whole state, and I could just feel them. I could feel them just going into the gum. Like digging, like drilling into the bone of my jaw. And literally just, they were wrestling with that tooth. I, I just felt that at one, at one point, they were just like wrestling. They were pulling on it, on the tooth. That was on this side. This is, by the way, this is the non-impacted side. This is the impacted side. But I only remember what they were doing on this side. I'm like, just get it out. Just get it out. Just get it out. Like your life depends on it. That's all I'm trying to say. Oh my gosh. I have a minute of recording left, but I am not even halfway done. So you know what? I'm just going to get this... Uh, storage cleared up, and I'll keep talking. Be right back. All right, you got it all cleared. So yeah, they gave me a local anesthetic. I mean, I didn't. I didn't. I don't. I don't want general like it, where they just pull me to the side. I just don't. And then after that, you feel the side effects and everything, and it's just. No, I don't want. I I, I prefer local. I prefer local. Because you don't wake up confused and then you're just, I don't know. I can't imagine being in that state. That's for like more major. If I had something more major, yeah. But they did local. But the thing is. And then they gave me a gauze. And you have to bite firmly on it. 
until the bleeding stops because, you know, in wis- during wisdom tooth surgery, like, they don't just cut your gum. Okay, they, they go all the way, like, into your bone. <laughs> and that, cause that's where, like, the, like, like, from where the ris- wisdom tooth, like, stems from. The jaw bone underneath. Which is why I had to get it removed. And eventually I get my jaw surgery. And then bam. The wisdom teeth is right there. Hey. Yeah. So I got out the dentist. We're all done. That took like what? Well maybe 30 or so minutes. I mean for three teeth it might, it might maybe take more than 30 minutes. But yo. The, just the feeling of having no like sensation anywhere. Besides being like cold and you know you feel numb because you don't feel your hands, you don't feel that. That's one thing. But when you had freaking pins jumped into you, where you feel where your nerves are disabled, okay? Your nerves are disabled. You feel nothing, which is how an anesthetic works. You lose all sensation. I lost all sensation, not just in the gum. I lost all sensation in my teeth. I lost it in my tongue. I lost it on like the gums here and the gums on this side all over my mouth and in my whole jaw and part of like the side of my face and maybe like the top of my lip here. I was just wondering how like, how am I going to get through this? Even through the first stage because the first day was probably like, I don't know. I felt like I could just could have done more. To, uh, like I, uh, like I kind of regretted it by the first day. I just felt like I could have done more to like, you know, prepare for this. And then there's just the gauze on my, both of my sides. And it's just like, I don't know, how do I look like? You, I just look like I was, I got beat up at school. It looked like I got beat up, generally beat up. But not until like the second day, third day afterwards. Because by that time, it's normal to experience swallowing. And in my case, I wasn't... Yo, I've seen people when they were swallowing, oh my goodness, they were so beat up. Especially when your teeth are impacted. Because that's that's where, that's, that's, that's where you... Where you would most complications would set in, and once they're out, because they're already erupted and like they cause you the problems initially, and then they'll cause you a problem of more swelling, and you're gonna get beat up, even with anti anti inflammatory, you know, uh, substances. Like it is proven that pineapple juice before. A wisdom tooth surgery, or before any surgery, even it's proven that you know it is set to reduce your chances of your body sending an inflammatory reaction that cause swelling or pain, even it doesn't matter in the gum and you know on the face. But if you're impacted wisdom teeth, that don't matter. You're gonna get beat up. And that's what happened to me. So I'm going to continue on the first day. I was basically just. I was just out of it, man. After the numbing swelled off. But before that. While I was still numb. Literally while I was still numb. Not in taste. I could taste. Because. 30 minutes after. The the procedure. I got it to where it got me a cool smoothie. And I think a smoothie is something you should have because when you get your wisdom teeth out for the with for within the first week you cannot have anything. Almost nothing except for foods that you can just straight up just swallow. You just put it in your mouth. Ain't no chewing, you don't need that, none of that. You just swallow it. Or foods that are like very, very soft to chew. But on the first day, I could not bite down on nothing. All I had was a smoothie. And when I was drinking that smoothie, considering that I had all lost all sensation, lost all control, I could not even talk on my tongue when I'm swallowing. 
I'm not swallowing normally like that. Because when I'm swallowing, because I, I, I cannot move this because I have no control, it usually, this, my bottom lip would just be making like move. It would literally come forward whenever I'd be swallowing. So that was not, that was not fun at all. That was not comfortable at all. That's one thing. <laughs> but I got through the whole smoothie. I was just taking it easy, you know, taking small sips. I didn't sip too aggressively. Because guess what happens? When you sip too aggressively, especially within the first day, because you have open sockets, all right? Think about that. Open sockets that bleed out for the first maybe, I guess, hour max. If it does any more than that, you got to go. You got problems. You got problems. But not for me. I didn't. You have a blood clot there that needs to, like, form. And you, if by anything, if you're not soft on the mouth, bro, I'm telling you. You're posing yourself a risk of, especially in the early stages of recovery. If you are not careful... You'll see that blood, that blood clot dislodge out of the socket, exposing the, the open socket. Think of it, the open socket. And when I mean open, you can see open bone, the jaw bone, an empty socket that is exposed to bacteria, to food, to air. And you know what happens? It can get easily infected that way. And it could cause something known as a dry socket. Now, a dry socket, I said I was going to get to it. And I'm explaining it to you. Is when it's a common complication after a wisdom tooth surgery. It's rare. Okay. It's rare. That's one thing. It doesn't happen a lot. And thankfully, it did not happen to me. Because, yo, when I was going through the whole recovery thing, my goodness, dry socket. That was not even in the back of my head. It was right here. Getting to the end of the recovery, that was in the back of my head. Because I was constantly worrying about how I how I should be doing things differently in order to avoid this. Because what if I just be doing things normally and then just out of nowhere, in all rare occasions, just get a dry socket. Because I felt, I, I just feel like sometimes life just be unfair that way. So, yeah, first day. Barely ate anything. Second day, I started to swell up. I had, I had, numbing is gone. All good. All good. No nerve damage. No nothing. And no more bleeding also. But I was beat up, yo. And that is not even the most I've been swelling. But day two, I just continued to soft with that. Oatmeal and the breakfast. Because, you know, oatmeal is just swallow. Oh, don't forget another thing. I had to rinse after anything I ate or drank. And I couldn't brush my teeth for the first three days. So I made sure I just got like good scrubbing before I even went to the dentist the first day. Which is what you gotta do. Oh my gosh, you don't want them to be telling you, shaming you all, telling you all the stuff that you should be, oh, you should be doing this, yo, you better, you know, you don't take care of you're gonna go hygiene up. Shut up. Anyway. So the second day was... Basically like day one, except I felt, uh, I felt it all. It was, my gosh, let me, I forgot something on day one. After the, once the numbing was gone, oh, it was, boy, oh my, way worse. I felt all the soreness just, it was so freaking sore. Like I didn't think, I didn't think that, you know, that even though the numbing would wear off, that if there was pain, it would be mild. But I was almost reaching for the pills. I was almost reaching. I genuinely thought, no, I actually have to take this pill. I actually have to take this. But the minute I start taking that, because that's those prescriptions. If I take that, I cannot miss a dose. I have to be taking that regularly. Yo. I was prescribed two pills. One for the swelling, one for the pain. Yo, if I take that pain, I the, the painkillers, I got to take it with food. Because... Those, those, those painkillers, um, that, what's the name of it? I forgot the name of it. But yeah, some this and that. Chemicals, you, 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 substances you cannot pronounce. It's not easy on the, the stomach, so that's why you gotta take with food. Otherwise, you're gonna get upset about it. But that's what happened. I didn't take the painkillers though. I just, I just fought through the pain. 
Eventually it did it did wear out the pain wore off but my jaw was sore but not inside my gums where but but the jaw was sore until I got to bed and I just slept peacefully. But when I was in bed, you know I didn't just sleep with like one pillow. I had to sleep with my head propped up, elevated, sleeping on my back. Like I could not lay down on my side or anything. That's the worst thing though. If you had it on one side, you could sleep on the other side. But both sides, I have to sleep popped up and that was just the worst thing ever. I could not even sleep, bro. I mean, I was decently rested, but that's just basically it. I just wanted to sleep normally, but I couldn't. But you got to prevent the swelling, right? Yeah, didn't. Because the second day, I was swallowed up. Third day, that's when the swelling was like, at, bro, that's when it was in its prime, bro. Let me just say that right now. Let me just say it like that, in its prime. Because, freaking, look at this. You see this? You see this right here? Uh, that's how I look like. Freaking Alvin the Chipmunk right here. Look at that. You see that? Yeah. That's how, like, that's how, that's how, like, I lost my whole, like, the definition of, you know, my facial structure. All because of the swelling and the inflammatory, you know, things going on. And I think third, the th third day was probably the worst day. That's a day I actually want to forget, bro. That's the day I want to forget. That was even worse. Th the third day was worse than the first day. Not because it was too painful. But actually, my my like my jaw was still getting even way more sore than it was, and not just because it was sore, because but because I was actually like starting to think that, shoot, bro, I got a, I might I might I might I might be getting a dry socket, yo. I was still eating soft foods. I was still sleeping with my head ele head elevated. I was not doing any vigorous activity or any of that. But I was in pain. Like, I was again in pain. So I was thinking, no, nah, hell no, nah, hell no. Nah. Yo, this is a dry shot. Yo, I better go back. <laughs> and yo, by that time, I, my body was just out. I was out, man. Because I had to modify my diet. In a way, I couldn't get enough. I could not... You feel I could not be satisfied just sticking with the same soft foods and liquids that don't fill me up. Low calories. I low almost no like no protein, which helps build, you know, maintain muscle, maintain energy, maintain uh gum tissue regeneration, right? Ah, I was tired, man. And that's when the depression hit. The depression actually hit. By day three, and just like I was for the for the for the first seven days, probably not gonna make it, man. Dry socket, not in the back of my head. It was right here. I was always thinking about it. I was just wondering that, like the moment that if a dry socket happens to me. Because a dry socket pain, let's be real. Let's be real. You're gonna think that stuff is just easily, easily, easily manageable. Not even painkillers will solve that. That pain is no. Yo, that pain is something else. That's a. That's a. That's not a painkiller. That's a killer pain. That's a killer pain. That's why painkillers can't solve it because that's a killer pain type level of pain. And then you're going to have to go back and the healing will last way longer. Now between days four and five, you know, I was still swelling, but I, I couldn't manage chewing, like very soft chewing food. Like I, I could try, you know, scrambled eggs. I was fine, you know, but by day four, I was just generally getting tired of it. I could not live off of these stupid foods no more. 
So, I tried biting down on some french fries. But like the softer end of it, not the two crunchy ones or the ones that are like, like chips. Nah, not those ones. But even I had trouble biting on those. Because, on both sides, think of it. I have to chew if, if, with, with, with the front. No! Yeah. My, my teeth cannot make I have an open and underbite. Think of it. My top being pushed back, my mandibular out like that. How can I even make it? How can I even make it? How did, how did I think I was going to make it through that? When I have other dental issues on top of that, bro. So in my case, it was almost impossible. Come day six. Day six. It was actually going pretty good. Until I ate something. And I realized I had food debris get stuck on my other, my socket. So I'm like, yo. I tried cotton swab. I tried rinsing. And that's why I was so angry at the dentist. Because if they could have given me a syringe, I wouldn't have to go back the next day. And then they would stick sharp crap inside my socket. And then they would cause even more trouble with it. Now they will cause more inflammation. Then they will go and prescribe me to the clinic to get a freaking par paradix chlorhexidine glucolin which helps with inflammation I was so mad yo I, I knew I wasn't gonna make it at that day I was like no I was not gonna make it I am done for I was done for and yeah giving me a syringe I could have rinsed that out way easier then just swishing it around my mouth because that didn't help to clean out my socket that was open with debris inside of it, posing a risk of infection and delayed healing. I genuinely believe it was all done because by day seven I had to go back and visit. It was desperate. It was really desperate. So they prescribed me with the antiseptic mouthwash that I had to use twice a day which contained alcohol inside of it now I can live the rest of my life knowing I have done alcohol I'm an alcoholic now but you know but right but right after that just like that after we got out of the bam I was actually positive about everything for once and now that I was all said and done, day 8, 9, 10. Now, I am just, I'm more normal than I even was before. I can just bite down normal now. Not worrying about wisdom teeth for the rest of my life. Didn't think I was going to make it. If you're getting your wisdom teeth out, I'm going to drop more tips in the next video. Because we're out of seconds now. Next video, I'll see y'all. Peace out.